This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex. Get ready to rumble. Oh, rather get ready to ramble. Till midnight tonight. Hey, Larry Bubbles Brown, how are you, my friend? Going, Alex. Yeah? What's new out in your part of the United States of America out there in San Fringima? Uh, let's see. I just read that uh, if you're if you make under 120 thousand a year, you're in poverty. <laughs> you're considered in poverty here. So. Oh, really? Oh, you mean yeah. in San Francisco? Yeah. Yeah. Not in the rest of the United States. No. Because I would be in poverty then. Although it's probably the same in New York. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, we're we're not poverty stricken. I mean, you know, uh, but my wife just pretty much left her full-time jobs she's getting paid quarter pay for the next two years and so we maybe make uh oh a hundred thousand a year something like that okay and, you know but then again uh we have five hundred dollar a month apartment so you know um i would imagine you your poverty if you're a hundred and twenty thousand in san francisco that is amazing okay? yeah that's so how to, it's, uh, it was much better when we were kids growing up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm thinking of starting a new uh, little show, a new little podcast called When I Was a Kid. Um, and I think it's actually going to be pronounced that way. When I Was a Kid. Uh, and, and just <laughs> dealing with all the things that have changed in my lifetime. Like, for instance. Uh, let's talk about things that do not exist any longer. Do you know anywhere you can find a telephone booth? Uh, pay phones I haven't seen in ages. Those are gone. Pay phones completely gone. And they used to have, do you remember, like some places that have like really fancy private booths? Oh, well, in like hotels, they would have these. Yeah. yeah. And they had like soundproofing in them. Uh-huh. And things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I don't I haven't seen a, a f- telephone booth in years and the last telephone booths were using as being used as toilets by the homeless, you know. <laughs> I mean, but we don't have we don't have to, uh, when I was a kid, we had phone booths. And you needed one. That was a, the equivalent of a cell phone. That was when you were out somewhere you could make a call. Yes, or you could be totally free from everyone too. <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, the benefits are that when I was a kid, you never got spam calls. Never got spam. You never got, uh, what else is missing that? uh... Did you ever get spam calls uh, in those days? Did people call up and try and sell you something? I don't think so. I don't even remember telemarketers calling the old landline i think there were but they you know they were liking what they called boiler rooms or something where they'd all be in there uh uh, 50 of them or something all calling people and trying to sell them something but it wasn't like i get maybe three or four spam calls a day and i'm lucky some people get more and uh and it's getting worse by the way uh from what i've heard uh and uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's not good. It's not fun. What, what happened to the do not call list? Uh, it do not work no more. Uh, I, I have no get, idea. Uh, I think cause they can get around it with, uh, well, well here's the they thing. Make phony numbers up. Well, here's the thing is they spoof the numbers. That's to begin yeah. with. Okay. So the number that comes up looks like it's a local call or whatever. Most of these spam calls are coming from Europe. Okay, uh, m- maybe Russia. Um, I've gotten a few Chinese spam calls, all in Chinese. I've gotten those, yeah. Yeah, 
And I, I want to know what they're thinking when they're calling a number in the United States and then you get Chinese being spoken and that anybody except a really fluent Chinese person would understand it. In fact, even Chinese kids today probably don't know how to speak Chinese. Yeah. So, um, But these things are coming from other countries, so they can't stop them. They can't arrest them. They can't charge them with, you know, anything. Uh, so, I mean, it's it, it, they're all coming from other places. They're not coming from here. No. And and they, they all want me to, you know, buy some extra insurance for my car, and I don't own one and haven't owned one for 15 years. Can you imagine Alex Bennett not owning a car? Yeah, you have, you have hot cars. I used to get the best cars I could get, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't a big car freak. For instance, I went out and I bought a, uh, I bought a, a 300ZX. You remember those? Twin, twin turbo, yeah. Twin it was turbo. Really fast. Twin turbo, yeah. Well, I don't know if it was really fast because I never drove that fast, okay? <laughs> you can't around here, no. But I would drive down the street in this thing, and kids would give me the OK sign. <laughs> you know, and I would go, uh, and the only reason I bought the car is I went into a dealership. It was in the, in the, uh, in the dealership in the what do you call it, the uh, showroom, and um, I said I want that, and they said, well, that's uh, that has that is considered used because it's been used as a demo. Um, we'll give it to you for so much, and my business manager Gary said. Uh, Nah, we don't want to take it at that price. And he said, "Go ask your." I love this. He said, "He said, well, uh, go ask your uh, your manager how much he can you can give it to me for." And so he goes and he comes back, and he says uh, a price. And Gary goes, "No." He says, "Well, my manager said you name a price." And Gary goes, "One dollar." Yeah. <laughs> And the guy goes, you're kidding. He says, you said you'd go back to your manager and ask him. So the guy <laughs> goes back and tells him $1. Yeah. And the guy comes back and says, we can't do it for $1. Finally, he got, him, got to a certain point, and Gary still didn't like the price. And he said, well, thank you very much. We're leaving. And I'm, I'm going as, I'm, as we're leaving. I go, I want that car. I want that car. He says, shut up. And he says, I want that car. He says, "He will. You'll hear from him before our hand hits the door. It, it, you know, opener thing." <laughs> and we immediately go for the door. And just before he hits the door, the guy goes, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> and he comes over to us and says, "How about this much?" And Gary went sold. And we wow. left. We we left with the car that day. You know, and that's how I got my three hundred Z. But I never appreciated it like somebody who was into sports cars. You know, I liked it. You could take the T top off, and you know, it was a, it was it was a nice car. A it little, was, yeah. A little too low though, because when I would pull into like a uh, uh, a supermarket, you know how they had those little bumper risers so that you wouldn't like go past a certain point. Remember? You can't go more than two miles an hour. No, know? no, no, no. But I mean, no, you're you're. You're parking it, and then there's this like little bumper thing. It's like a, a riser that goes up. So th this is as far as you can go into the spot. But the trouble is the car was so low, it was, it was lower than, the, uh, than those bumpers. And many times I'd get hooked on them and pull them out, and the bottom fender would fall off. <laughs> the, wow. That, it, was, it was just a way. It was a low... Um, seated car i don't know what what's the term you're a car guy aren't you it's a uh, low uh what do they call that uh, low slung, clearance a low clearance low, low clearance car yeah so anyway that was my that was my favorite uh that was a favorite car of mine and then i had an acura uh top of the line acura that i leased and i remember that one that was 99 yeah that was like i like that for long trips because that was like driving to Osei Sacramento in a, in your living room. You know, it just had that kind of feel that you didn't feel like you were actually driving. Those are great cars, yeah. yeah. 
The worst okay. cars, I think, the worst car I ever drove, <laughs> rode in, uh, was a friend of mine had a $250,000, uh, was it a Ferrari? No, it was, what's the other company? Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Yeah, $250,000 Lamborghini. He's a, actually, a friend of his gave it to him. His business partner gave it to him because he was he getting didn't. another car and he didn't need the Lamborghini anymore. So he gave it to him. So anyway, he's got this Lamborghini. He had, his other car was a Ferrari, all right, uh, but a Lamborghini. And this is a $250,000 car. He says, come on, let's take it for a run up to, up to, up to Tahoe. Okay, we were in Sacramento at the time. And he says, uh, I said, okay. So we get in it. It was the most uncomfortable car I've ever ridden in in my <laughs> life. I got to, 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 to Lake Tahoe, my ass was hurting. It was so. Yeah, every bump in the road. Every bump in the road. And I went to him, what is $250,000 about this car? He said, oh, the engine. The fact that it's a Lamborghini, El Diablo, I think, was the name of the model or something like that. And I'm going, Jesus, you know, for this kind of money, at least you want your ass not to hurt after you've driven a couple hundred <laughs> miles. So um, uh, that, that, was the, that was the worst car I've ever ridden in in my life. How about you? Have you ever ridden in some terrible cars? I had the uh, I had a Fiera, which was really low. I, I liked it actually, but it was really hard to get <laughs> it was hard to get in and out of. Let me it was see so if, low. if I it, let me see if I remember the Fiera. Uh, this was made by a major company, wasn't it? Major Pontiac. Pontiac, and mm -hmm. it was it was, uh, was little it? two seater. Little two seater, yeah, yeah. Uh, mid engine. Mm -hmm. what, by mid engine, you mean it was in the middle of the car? Right behind the seat. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. So when they had to like check the oil, they had to go into your back seat. Yeah, or if they there was, they opened up in the back, yeah. and the trunk was in the front. Yeah, but the Fiera, uh, it didn't last long, did it? Last from uh, eighty eight to eighty four to eighty eight. Really, and that was it. Why did they give up on it? They weren't selling many. They weren't selling many. Okay, Toyota that? came out with the MR two, and that ran them off the chart. But was was, their, was, their, their was this their desire to kind of get into that sports uh, area where, like, Corvette was very big in that area? So was Thunderbird until it became a major size car. You know, it stopped being a sports car. I mean, when I was a kid, you know what, what car you really wanted to have was the Thunderbird. Because that was just a really cool little car. My uncle had one of those, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they had they, the little. They had the removable hard top with the porthole. Right, right. But I mean, it was a two seater basically, and, from fifty five to yeah. fifty seven. And yeah. then all and of a sudden, they were, yeah, became huge. Well, they then said, "We're coming out with a new Thunderbird." You know, the family size Thunderbird. I go, "You can't do a thun. It's not a Thunderbird." I looked at this thing. I said, "This is not a Thunderbird." And they never ever came back and said, "Okay, well, you know, we'll do Thunderbird Classic." You know, but on the other hand, you got to hand it to uh, Chevrolet. They held tight on the on the Corvette. They never. It, yeah, yeah, it's still it's still around and uh, came out in 1953. They made the first year. They made 300 of them. Wow. And you know who? Uh, what actor was one of the first owners? In 1953. Hmm. Well, I'd like to say Steve McQueen, but I don't think he was a star at that time, was he? That would have been my guess, but no, it was Ed Blair and John Wayne. John Wayne? Had, had one of the very first Corvettes. Wow. I don't think he could fit in it. But. Yeah. So then they ramped up the amount they made every year, though. Yeah, they made 300 the first year, and uh, there was never a... Uh, they've never made a lot of them because uh, people don't buy two-seaters. That's why... Uh, Lee Iacocca came up with a Mustang, which had a small rear seat, and they sold a ton of those. So. I had it, in the second year it was out, I had a Mustang. And I got to tell you, I love that car. What yeah, a, what a great, great, to begin with, if I remember the price, it was like $1,800. Yeah, yeah. $1,800, and it came, this was new for the time, folks, padded new. dash, padded dash, 
rugs on the floor. You're fully carpeted on the floor. Uh, bucket seats. Seat belts. Seat belts. Yeah. And um, uh, eighteen hundred bucks. That was it. Now, yeah. that was a lot of money in those days. I mean, you know, when I bought one, I said, how much are the payments going to be every month? You know, oh, $35? Oh, that's terrible. I, will I be able to make it? You know. But, I mean, it was, it was a, I thought it was a, probably the, one of the finest cars I ever owned, you know, considering price as well. But I think it was that the price was that low that made it so sensational and the kind of value they were giving you for your money. Yeah, now you're paying a fortune for, I've heard a lot of the new cars, just pretty much crap. So. Yeah, the Mustang, though, the original Mustang was a four-seater, wasn't it, anyway? Yeah. Yeah, it was always, it was always a four-seater. Always. Uh, yeah. And then I went and I bought another Mustang after that when I was in Houston, Texas. Uh, so, I mean, I, I was a Mustang guy for quite a few years. But it, are they still making the Corvette? Yeah, I guess so, huh? Yeah, they are, uh-huh. So it's been around since, God, it's been around almost uh, 70 years. Do they still have the fiberglass body? They're still fiberglass, yeah. And um, I believe the new ones are now mid-engine. They talked about that for years. Now they're mid-engine. They're really unbelievably fast. What what is what is the advantage of mid engine? I see. I mean, this is how little I know about cars or really care about cars. But what what is? Uh, I think in racing cars, it might give a little handling advantage. I don't know for sure, but yeah, yeah. But they're not easy to uh, access. I would think they'd be a pain in the ass. But well, you know, they must have done something to make it easier. Yeah. But I mean, like when they want to check your oil, how do you check your oil? Do you have to go into the back seat, or is there maybe a oh, they, got, they got a little thing that pops up and that opens up. Oh, know. I see. <laughs> you can check your oil. The, uh, engine, it, the engine is where the trunk would be in a normal car, so you just pop that open. What so was that? That's your hood, the back of the car. There was a car my father bought that had the engine in the rear. Um, what was it that came out? The thing that, uh, that, uh, they, oh, the unsafe, Corvair, the Corvair, he bought a Corvair unsafe at any speed, it, Ralph at, Nader. Uh, exactly. Well, my father, I think got rid of it after two months. He took it back and said, I want my money back because he just found it was a crappy car. It was just not a very good car. They built this car folks with the engine in the rear. Uh, and um, there were some cars that were had engines in the rear. What foreign cars had engines in the rear? Porsche. Uh, the, well, uh, the Volkswagen. Yeah, Porsche and the Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both coming from like, basically the same company. Uh, but uh, they so they decided to put it in the rear, and uh, people would like other cars would hit them, and they'd explode. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was not a not a terribly safe car, okay? And my father got rid of it and just went back and said, this is the crappiest car I ever owned. I got an, I had a car once. You're going to love this. I want to see if you remember the car. Uh, uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Uh, I had, I bought, I wanted a sports car. I hadn't owned a sports car at that point. So... I saw this one car, and it cute little car, okay? The Sprite. You remember the Sprite? I remember those. Yeah, they were the English car. They had Austin funny little Healy. headlights. Austin Healy Sprite. Looked kind of like a frog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I bought this car, and one day it got really rainy in Larkspur. And... Uh, I actually went through puddles that were up to the height of the car, and water was pouring into the car. Jesus. I was up to my ankles in 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 water. I immediately drove this thing back to the to the dealer. I said, I want my money back. I said, this is a, such a crappy car. And they agreed to pay me the money back, and I took another Really? Car. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. But that was my... That was my first entree into sports cars. And then, uh, of course, I must have, could we consider Mustang a sports car? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was my second entree into it. And my third was, oh, I had, 
I had a Mazda RX-7. RX-7 before I had the... Uh, I guess I really did own a lot of yeah. sports cars. I remember your RX-7 and when you were at uh, uh, Kits on uh, Sutter Street there. Yeah, and it had a Wankel engine. It was, it was kind of a uh, ro- rotary kind engine. Of a, uh, kind of a raspberry color. Uh, it wasn't raspberry. It was, I think it was burgundy, maybe something like that. I yeah, that was it. Yeah. That burgundy. burgundy. But, but uh, that car... Uh, was uh, I thought it was a terrific car. I mean, I just uh, worked it beautifully. And well, those had, engines are supposed to be incredibly smooth. They were smooth. You didn't hear them. They weren't that loud. And they were they were rotary engine folks. Uh, they don't make a rotary engine car anymore, do they? They still have it, yeah. Well, they still do have a. Somebody has a rotary engine car. Who? GM. Uh, GM owned the pet. They bought it from Mazda and owned it for a while. I think Mazda got it back. But do they make them? They, I just saw. I forget what car they're putting one in, but they're they're notorious for they're good engines, but they suck gas like crazy. Oh, I don't remember that. Gas was too cheap back then. Yeah, <laughs> under a dollar. So. You know, when when gas start, prices start rising, you start considering what the car gets in mileage. Right. Uh, but in those days, you just didn't. You know. But uh, it, 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 I guess it did use a lot of gas. But it was a great car, just a great car. And then I got rid of that. That's when I got into the RX-7, or the uh, uh, 300ZX. Uh-huh. So. And I, as I recall, you were, uh, park, <laughs> you were parking the ZX in your garage one day, and it backfired or something, and your, your girlfriend thought someone had shot you. Do you remember? I don't remember that. Yeah, he said the car made a horrible backfire. It's really loud. She thought someone had assassinated you. I don't remember that, but I'm sure you do, and I will rely on your memory. Okay. In fact, well, it's such a funny story. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, uh, why do you have guide dogs? Because people can't see, right? Mm-hmm. So I want you to be my guide dog, but my memory guide dog, because as I start forgetting things, I'd like to have you around and go, do you remember when I did this? And then you say, well, you really didn't do that. You did this. You know, uh, you'd be very good. It's kind of a memory guide dog. (laughs) We should start writing this down and make a book. Yeah. But uh, why why did cars backfire? I don't remember that. you could actually, at one point, you could make a car backfire. Uh, uh, people used to stick potatoes in your exhaust pipe. <laughs> that would do it. Yeah. That was a oh, great practical joke to pull. Oh, really? I don't, I yeah. Never, I never, <laughs> it I never, builds up a bunch of pressure and then just blows a muffler out. <laughs> that was our idea of a practical joke when we were kids, yeah, folks. The, the old potato and the muffler. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, let's see here. That's about it for me and cars. But you know what we've done? We've spent most of our time today talking about cars. Yeah, because people listen to radio in cars. Okay, so what what cars have you had? My first was a, uh, a, uh, uh, a 1939 Plymouth uh, Pontiac Torpedo. Wow, that's so old. Yeah. Beautiful car, though. Beautiful car. And then I, I bought a cheaper one, which was real. I can't even remember what it was. Another, it was a Plymouth or something. I don't know. It was like a night. It was two years earlier. It was like 1937 something. Uh, and then um, uh, I started working and I got my, I think my first car was a Ford. My first car after that was a Ford in 19, oh, I don't know, 1959 Ford or something. I don't, can't remember. And then I went through a whole bunch of other cars over the years that were kind of not memorable. And then finally, I started when I started really making money and I could afford a decent car, I started buying some of these sports cars. Now that we mention it, I actually have owned more sports cars than I ever knew I owned. Yeah, that's all I ever knew you were. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, what the hell. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, Larry, you know, it's always a pleasure to talk with you because... Uh, uh, number one, you're my new memory guide dog. 
<laughs> you know. And we're the tar, we're the car talk guys. <laughs> we're the, and we're we're doing car talk, folks. So I hope you enjoyed it, because uh, uh, what I know about cars, you can put in a thimble. Okay, but you know more about cars than I do. You're. I know a little, but I, I don't know anything mechanically. But I think we both appreciate yeah. cars. Well, uh, well it, when, it, it, let me just say this quickly because we've run out of time. In California. Owning a car is very important because that's how you get around. Otherwise, you really don't get around. There's no public transportation in most places. It's no. sufficient. So you, you, a car is very important. So your decision on what you're going to spend four hours a day in every day is, uh, is important. So, yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, can we talk to you next week? We will. Oh, uh, we will. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bubbles. You know him as Mr. Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, thank you very much, Larry Bubbles Brown. Love Larry, love the Brownster. Yeah, whatever, whatever we call. Anyway, uh, yes, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Uh, the reason we had Larry on tonight, somebody was asking on the chat, uh, was because of a conflict of uh, whatever. What happened is, is that uh, um, uh, 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 our good friend Phil could not be on tonight because he has a meeting with his photography club where he goes in and beats up old pho photographers uh, with his professionalism and wins every week or something like that. I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it. But anyway, so that's, that's the story with him, and that's why he's not here tonight. So that means... That he'll be on tomorrow night, which means that I was going to do a uh, interview with uh, Kravitz tomorrow during the day, so and play it tomorrow night. But unfortunately, we'll put that off until Friday, so everything's kind of turned around a little bit to accommodate Phil. Why I accommodate Phil, I have no goddamn idea in this whole lousy world of ours. Uh, there's nobody waiting tonight; just two people. Uh, this is uh, getting pathetic. Uh, they're good people. I mean, they're people I enjoy and people I like. But uh, it just, you know, I'm just, I'm starting to, I'm starting to tire of this, you know. So, but we'll see. See if anybody decides to join us at any point here. Uh, let me uh, bring them in and let me see here. Uh, and I will. Uh, there they are. Wait a minute. And there's Charlie. Hey, Charlie doesn't have baseball tonight. Nope. Right? No baseball? No, on Wednesdays, usually. Yeah, yeah, no baseball. And, uh, um, and of course, uh, Jeff doesn't have football tonight, so no. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys? That's true. What? What were you saying? That's true. That's true. Uh, let me see here. Here comes Alan. Okay, we can always count on Alan to join us. Oh, I found this humorous. I love that T-shirt. That's very good. <laughs> Is that a new shirt? No, I've worn it before, but not very often. Where, where do you get all these T-shirts? I mean, they used to ask that of, of the people who... Facebook or Amazon.com, you know, wherever. They, you're, you're drinking. I'm, I'm sucking on a... Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're strawberries. It's my new thing. 60 calories. Keeps me happy for a while. Oh, well, I, you know, I like that. And there's real pieces of strawberry in it. Well, that's good. That's How good. are you doing? I'm, 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 I'm doing How's okay. Doing? You know, I'm still in pain from the hand. I think I may have wow. to go. I think, I, well, I think I may have to go to the doctor about it and have him give me a shot. I'll bet you something. fractured it. I don't think I fractured it. I don't no. know. But if you I wouldn't be a fracture, you wouldn't be able to open and close it. You know, I, I, I've, it's a little hard doing this sometimes, but it's not like it was. It's better. It's marginally better, but it's still. I had an arthritis thing where he used to give me a shot for it right here. No. And when I did, and I, it went away because he gave me a shot, obviously. And then I did this fall and it came back. And I think maybe it aggravated the arthritis or something. I think one of the worst things I fell on my dominant right hand also is zipping your zipper up. Yeah. Trying to, yes. trying to pinch these two fingers yeah. together and get some strength. Yeah. I can, I, it used to be that I couldn't do this. Okay. But now, uh, now I can do it. So I know I'm, mar I'm better than I was, you know. 
but not good enough yet. So, whatever. So, you could probably do some physical therapy on your hand. Uh, yeah, I could probably. Well, I'm, how about jerking off? That'd be good physical <laughs> therapy for Works for me. Works for you know. And, but then again, because of my operation, I got a great. Oh, I got to tell you, I got a great. Let me let me get it so I can read you the email. Where is it? Uh, de -de 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 -de. Where's my email? Come here. I hate this. Oh, now it froze up there when I tried to get to the uh, to the mail. I don't know. I'm gonna have to get a new machine here. Uh, let me see here. The ones that I, well, let me see. All sent. Uh, here's my. Uh, what happened was I wanted to get a hold of my doctor uh, because I, uh, um, I I was taking I've been taking this pill for a long time called uh, and you probably never probably heard of it called finasteride and what it does is it takes a <clears throat> large prostate and makes it smaller sometimes oh. over a period of maybe six months or whatever I've been taking it for fifteen years <laughs> now they've done all this stuff to my prostate when I had the prostate cancer. And so I wrote him and I said, I forgot to ask you this when I was in visiting you, uh, but uh, for the past 15 years I've been taking finasteride. Considering my recent procedure, do I need to keep taking it? Now this is why I love this urologist, because he has a sense of humor. He writes back, excellent question. At this point, with your prostate having been fried to use the vernacular, <laughs> it's <laughs> unlikely that the finasteride is doing much, you know. But I just love that. It has been fried, <laughs> you know. And it really was. It was fried. It was definitely fried. So, you know. Anyway. Oh, what do you know? Isn't the oh. name brand of that stuff Propecia? Uh, it, yeah, well, the, the brand, it's called Propecia, but that's the grow hair on your head version of the mm. same drug. Okay. But I took finasteride for 15 years, and it worked. Look at this. Yeah, there Look you go. That, you know. <laughs> You know, but I, I really, I really love him. He's really, he's a, I love, I, I, I never thought I would say I like my urologist, but I really feel confident. After I, you know, if you leave a doctor's office and you're feeling better than when you went in, you know, because he eased your mind about some things, you know, you've got a good doctor going for you. So, but that's all we talk about at my age is doctors, you know. Um, and you know, at this age, I get I get kind of I get morbid. I really do. I have a, Marjorie has a friend. She's been friends with this woman for well ever since they were in college together. And um, uh, her best friend has been married since they were in college to the same guy. And he came down with uh, I can't remember what it is. I think it's uh, whatever whatever. Uh, oh God. Uh, whatever um, Michael J. Fox has. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, come on, Charlie. You're the guy who's younger than I, I am. I got it too, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and he came down Parkinson's? with it. Parkinson's? Is that what he's what, got? What? Parkinson's? Parkinson's. He came down with yeah. Parkinson's. And uh, it got worse and worse and worse. And then he had to be put into a, uh, a, a, a nursing home. And then mm -hmm. it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And we just got the, the information yesterday that they've taken him off all food and everything because they really think he's ready to go. Okay, and that he'll be, go he'll be gone in a couple more days. And the reason I feel so bad about this is this is a, two people who have been with each other since college, since college. Mm -hmm. Raised families, all of that, and then they got to an age where they figured, hey, you know, we you we just you've retired from your law practice. I've retired from my law practice because they were both lawyers. Imagine two lawyers being married to each other. There must be some jokes about that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and 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 they figured what we'll do with our years now is we'll travel the world. Well, they didn't get the chance because he started coming down with Parkinson's. And, mm -hmm. You know, and it's just I feel so bad for them. You know, and I'm hearing more and more stories like this all the time. You know, and the and the trouble with getting older, getting to be my age, is that uh, uh, all the, all the people you start losing, you know, and and uh, you wonder why you're still here, and I guess I'm still here because I don't have any concept of dying. I don't know, so it's very strange, but I felt really bad about that, and uh, you know, and we're sitting here waiting, you know, and she says, well, the funeral will probably be this weekend. 
Oh God! You know, I mean, because it's just that they 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 did this with my mother. My mother at 101. One day she decided she didn't want to eat, just didn't want to eat. And they said, "Do you want us to give feed her uh, you know, intravenously?" And I said, "Is that going to make her better?" And they said, "No. She obviously, deep down, wants to die." I said, "So let her." You know, it was something I a decision I had to make. But you know, she was a hundred, almost 101 years old. And you go, come on, what, I want to live to be 102? Which, by the way, we just lost. Do you, do you know the actor Namaya Persoff? Yeah. Yeah, you do, right, Charlie? Um, I'm trying to think of some movies he's been in. If I showed you a picture, and I don't have a picture of him right here right now, uh, you would go, oh, him. Oh, okay, I've seen him in dozens of movies, all right? Uh, Namaya Persoff just died. He was 102. 102, and I'm sure didn't have insurance from the union. So, you know, but he died at 102. So you hear about these, a lot of these actors going at 102, 104, you know, so anyway. But I don't hear of any radio announcers going at that age, so I I, I don't have much hope. They all die in their 50s. Yeah. Well, you know, I wish at some point in my life I'd had a near-death experience, and then I probably wouldn't be as afraid of death. I mean... Uh, um, uh, the one person who's had near death experiences here is uh, <laughs> is, is there he is Jeff the walking miracle had sure. a stro stroke what 20 years ago oh yeah yeah 20 years ago 20 30 years ago 30 years ago when you can't remember, when you can't when you can't remember when you had your stroke you had a stroke <laughs> yeah. that's true yeah. Oh, boy. yeah yeah but anyway uh so you had a near-death experience, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, uh, did that did that kill any kind of fear you had of death? No. Because you came that close to it? No. No. I don't think so. I think, I think in general, people that have a good life want to continue, and people that are, like, in horrible shape want to go. I don't know. That. Jeff's obviously in very good shape and has a good life has Pam, has family. Yeah. yeah. So he would want to stay around for a while. Yeah, yeah I got kids. Yeah, but right. you're, not, you're, not, you're not in good shape. Do you want to die? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're ready to go. Good to well. I mean, I'm not, I don't think we're telling tales out of school. You could stand to use, lose a little weight, right? Me? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, the que the question is, uh, do, 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 you want, do you want to die? Think, yeah. See, the thing I'm nervous about is in a couple of weeks, i got to do redo my PSA mm -hmm. because it was moving up a little bit, still in the normal range, but they're going to decide if they want to do a biopsy based on that. And then who knows if I have prostate cancer, I there goes my I sex I life. I can't remember what my, what my, uh, what my doctor, uh, did. He had a special thing that when he gave me a PSA test, he also asked for another Another thing, I can't remember what it was called. They're going to do two this time. Yeah, one's called PSA and the other's called free PSA. No, that that's not it. This was another yeah. thing yet that uh, it supposedly, if you t if you take it, it looks at your PSA and you, my PSA had gone up to like a six point five, and then in this one it went down to like a four point four. It had gone down precipitously, so you would think there's nothing to worry about. But he threw in this other test which has good indicators of whether maybe you have prostate cancer or not. So does free PSA. Well, free PSA is, is not exactly the same thing as this thing. This thing is okay. a, better, a better predictor. So okay. at that point, he said, I don't go into giving biopsies willy-nilly because I want to make some money off of it because I make a bit of money off of doing them. Uh, and a lot yeah. of doctors just do them for that reason. He said, I don't. He said, but, but there is a chance that you have a higher Gleason score, right. so, so, which means that you like the honeymooners. Uh, and so uh, he did that test, and so he decided to do a biopsy on me, and that's when they found in one little lobe I had like a, a seven Gleason or something like that, and, uh, and I went for the whole, the whole number, and uh, it, it saved my life. You know, so I, I'll do whatever it takes. I mean, if if this shows that I need to have a biopsy, I'll have the biopsy. If there's cancer, I'll get it treated. Yeah. I don't want to. I 
for the sake of not being able to have sex or whatever it causes the side effects of the prostate cancer, mm -hmm. I don't want to have it spread and die of cancer yeah. if I can stop it. So if I can stop it and I, and I can't get a heart on anymore, it's not the end of the world. Well, listen, if you're dead, you can't get a heart on either. So you may no. as well do it while you're alive. Yeah, cancer is not a good way to die, though. So if it's treatable now, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. But it, you it, had the seeds, right? I had the seed. Well, I had both. I had the seeds and the uh, uh, radiation. The radiation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get sick from the radiation? No, no, no. This was uh, what they call. They, they sometimes they call it cyber knife. But it's really called stereotatic. Oh, stereotatic. It's a, it's a very focused beam. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's only five, uh, five um, shots with it. You know, and then you're done. It's not uh, like thirty days or something like that on and off. I mean, the other way. Is, Roland just told me you got to go five days a week for for four weeks. Well, then yep. ask him ask him about the cyber knife. Okay. You know, say you want the cyber knife. Let's let let. I guess we need to get past the blood work and see if that says yeah, I, I need mean, a you biopsy. Yeah, I mean, you may be fine, but don't let him don't let him just do a biopsy for the sake of doing a biopsy. Well, yeah. the first urologist wanted that, and I said, I want a second one. I want a second opinion. See, I've, I've had most of my adult life, I've had chronic prostatitis, and that can also cause your PSA to go up. Oh yes, and absolutely, so, absolutely. So they're so they're 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 they gave me a month, and today is my last day of of antibiotic, and normally that calms it down. And then two weeks from now, I go get tested. And okay, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, uh, hopefully it'll be okay. And if it isn't, you know, uh, in my case, hey, I've been two years cancer free now. I know a lot of people that have had prostate cancer had it treated. You know, I. The good thing is, is the digital test didn't show anything mm -hmm. other than make me squirm. And uh, outside it's of some size. poop in your ass, yeah, it's normal size. God, that hurts. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how people can take a dick up. Oh, anyhow, no, wait, so. no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, uh, it, look, it's it does not hurt. Uh, it, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. That's the term. It doesn't hurt the doctor. There's all. difference. Oh, no, that's right, that. Jeff. It didn't hurt the doctor at all. But well, mine gives me flowers afterwards. Oh, cool! And candies, <laughs> chocolates, nice some nice chocolates. How about the uh, biopsy? Did that hurt? No, no. Now wow. other people have gotten a biopsy. Said, oh, it hurt like hell, right? Yeah. Did you say you had one? Uh, you didn't yeah. have one, did you? Um, um, uh, uh, oh God, my yeah. mind, my mind. Yeah. Charlie, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. no, my my my, uh, my brother had had it and. Uh, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, I found it didn't hurt at all. Uh, on the other hand, who had it here? Somebody had it here. I think maybe it was Phil or somebody. Phil yeah. and, and says it's no walk in the park. Well, he yeah, he said it was no walk in the park. But it's over said, quickly. It hurts. I, no, but, but I didn't feel anything. It just uh, feels like he's using a stapler or something up my butt. Uh, but it's deadened enough, and he did it fine. I went after it was all over. I said, right. I thought this was going to be painful. He says, not the way I do it, you know. Right. Good. I'm good. You know. I'm good. And, and well, I'll, I'll do what needs to be done. I'm 63, and I'd like to be around for a while longer. Yeah. And yeah. if I have a, aggressive cancer and I have to have it treated or pulled out or whatever, actually, the interesting thing is with prostate cancer, if you're fat, that gives you extra protection. It's one of the few... How, how does it give you extra protection? I have no idea. He didn't. He said the studies just show overweight people tend to have uh, less less aggressive prostate cancers. <laughs> yeah, who know? Every other cancer it contributes to, but not that one. Yeah, uh, actually, weight has a lot to do sometimes. With what? Activity. What did you say? I think people who are overweight have generally run a high risk of getting cancer, I think. I Cancers, know. yeah, but obviously not this. I asked him because of my weight, and he said, no. He says, the, so the first thing that drives up prostate cancer is a sibling, a brother or father that had it. Mm -hmm. Nope, not my case. I'm sure, this is, thing, I'm sure this discussion is the kind of discussion that really draws in an audience. <laughs> yeah, the second thing is if you're black, and I said, well, not that either. And uh, yeah. so we'll see what happens because I've had chronic prostatitis most of my adult life. There's a good chance that's it. So well, I would I would say there is a good chance that's it. But you know, let's just wait and I see. I want to be I, better the, safe. Than the sorry. only thing I'm very and I, I say this to the people out there listening, and a lot of you go, well, I don't have to worry about that for a while. Well, you never know. 
you know. Yeah, One day you get it, they send you off to a urologist, next thing you know, he's t taking a staple gun to your prostate, you know. He went right up my hiney, Alex, when he gave me the uh, with, with the hand. He was like, he put the whole hand up yours? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Tony, <laughs> Tony, that's not, that's not part of the procedure, Tony. Right. <laughs> No, that's doctor the, liked the, you. Physical that's, uh, I had one doctor. I got to tell you, I had a doctor <laughs> once that every time I went to him, was something wrong. Doctor, I've got a sore throat. He says, bend over, and he would stick his finger up my ass. <laughs> and, 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 I would, and then I'd go another time, and I'd say, I have this, and he'd stick his finger up my ass. And finally I went, listen, why is it every time I come in here, you stick your finger up my ass? And he says to me, you like it, don't you? I have no choice. I said, what? no way I like it. I think he assumed oh. I was gay or something, you know. What what night did I call on? <laughs> what the hell? Female doctor gave me the well, well, you, you, well, you've been to the doctor. He's done that to you, right, Brian? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I'm. I. You know, I had him do it so many times now in my lifetime. It. It just. I. It's like water off a duck's back. You know, I don't care. You nervous then or no? no I no. get nervous. I mean, he does it, and it's you know he feels around there. And uh, I, I said, I said to him last time, I said, don't cut yourself on the seeds, you know, and uh, because these seeds are still embedded in my prostate. He says, no. We, I, he says, we don't. There's a membrane between our finger and your prostate. And we're just feeling for the lumps and stuff through the membrane. That's what you call your your your. Uh... Your uh, the skin in your in your uh, colon. I don't know something like that, but anyway. So uh, it, it, it's probably making people feel uncomfortable. So let's yeah, get on. Let's, let's get. COVID, let, let's yeah. not talk about this anymore. Let's talk about cystoscopies. I'll call you. Uh, how did we go from cars for a half hour to? <laughs> did you like our car discussion? The car discussion I had with Bubbles. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you and I. Alex, was the other stuff thing. was wrong, but. That is good. Uh, talk. I'll, I'll bet you and I, Alex, are the only two people that have had a cystoscopy. Well, I hope no one here has to have one. Okay. And they're not comfortable. Brian, what did you say about cars, about our car discussion? I was just joking. I said half the stuff you said was wrong. Uh, what wrong? No. What's wrong? <laughs> we no, kidding. no, just kidding. We no, just... You said some interesting cars, the Fiero and yeah, and the, yeah the, the, the RX-7. Okay, so... A Mazda RX-7, I was up on 280 near Redwood City, yeah. and I had a 5.0 Mustang hotshot convertible and everything, mm -hmm. and uh, one guy pulled up next to me, and we started racing on 280, and the guy left me. The rotary engine, I, I bowed down after that. That thing flew by me. They were good little, it was a good little car. I really liked it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I went from a regular Mazda car to that. And uh, I had, I guess, for about three years, and then I went up. I went to the three hundred Z X. What was then? A, it's they were a Datsun, I think, at the time, and then they yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, came whatever. Anyway, Nissan, uh, huh? Nissan. This Nissan. one was a Nissan. Oh. Uh, yeah, they had yeah. done away with the with the other car a year earlier. Something Can like I take Doctor Doom's position here for a, for a second on COVID? Doctor so Doom's that, position. That, Who's that? Oh, you mean Charlie? Yeah, Charlie. He usually talk. Mm -hmm. Used to talk about. So, uh, it, in the CDC Zoom meeting that I'm on, one in 351 adults in the U.S. has died of COVID. One in what? 351. 351. Yeah. People in the U.S. have died from COVID. Good. More parking spaces. Yeah, there you go. So the other, the other thing we talked about is the newest variant that's coming out. What's it called? X E. The letters X and the and the letter E. It sounds like a model car. I don't know where they're coming up with these names. I thought they were Roman or some some kind of thing, but it's you know B A two is the one that's all over the country now, but XE is picking up speed. Yeah, but my, the question is, are, are, are these, any of these terribly lethal, you know? Well, any COVID's lethal if you're not vaccinated. So if you're vaccinated, right. you stand a much better But look chance. at who's not getting vaccinated. It's it's the Darwin thing, you know? So the they die. So, so we die. Sure. We're weeding out the stupid, you know? Yeah. 
I hate to say that, but it's true. I, I saw the Pfizer was advertised on TV today. Yes, I saw an ad for that. To have the injection. Right. Yeah, to get, get I think, to get your booster well, on the booster. It's right. approved, so it's an approved drug, and they can use it. Of course. Know, sure, do advertising, why not? Yeah, yeah we, we, we have a big advertising campaign right now. So, like, probably about four months ago, we started, and they did... Um, we have a lot of uh, billboards now uh, in strategic locations where our new factories are. And so when I drive from Lodi, I see one of them. And then um, they actually did some commercials on CNN and stuff. And so that's bizarre when you were there with like you know, 50 people starting a company and now it's like worldwide. And I mean, I think I don't know how many people we have now, but it's just crazy. I see all these meetings and stuff for diversity and all these things. And man, I, I, have, I don't know anybody anymore. And mm -hmm. just to remember, you have so many, only so many people there. It's pretty, pretty weird. So you want to hear my gripe of the day? Sure. Um, okay. So a couple of months ago, my printer, my old printer went bad. Okay. As printers do, they, they go about every three years, like clockwork, they go out, right? So you get a new one. Uh, or either that or something gets stuck in them. I remember the time, by the way, when you could buy a printer and it never went out. You used to, sure. when they first came out with the laser printers, HP. These things were, you, you could do anything to them and they wouldn't go bad. They lasted forever. And there were people in companies who wanted the newest laser they could get and these weren't going out so they couldn't replace them. So they'd be sticking like uh, paper clips in these things just to get them to break and they wouldn't break. Okay, but now, eh, not so much. So I needed a new printer. So I went out and I went to Costco and they had a, uh, well, in fact, I went online to Costco and I had yeah, got, Instacart pick it up and I got that one. Yeah. Right? The same exactly one you got? Same one. Exactly. The, the, the 9018E. Yep. Right? 9018E. Yeah. Well, Isn't let me tell a you a little, a little thing about HP and what they're doing now. Did you sign up, Brian, for the uh, HP Plus? No. See, I did because what happens? It says, you want an extended warranty? Sign up for the HP Plus. Mm. So if you sign up for the HP Plus, it does something to your printer where it will no longer accept third party ink cartridges. Oh. <laughs> now, they, then they also offer you six months of the instant ink thing. Now, now, let me tell you something. Number one, if you get one of these, do not get the uh, uh, HP Plus because you're going to naturally want to because it gives you an extended warranty of an extra and year. And free ink for six months. No, and, well, if don't sign up for that either. No, Here's no, the no. reason why. I found out about that too. They have this instant ink. What they send you is a cartridge that has more ink in it than any cartridge has ever had ink in it before. Okay? So it's in there. And every month, they charge to your card. In my case, they want to charge eleven ninety nine a month, right? Every month, okay. So let's say I tell them, I don't want it anymore. Stop charging me for it. So they stop charging me for it, or my credit card goes bad, and I don't do anything about it. All right, or it's an old credit card runs out, and I don't do mm -hmm. anything about it. The minute I stop paying them. They stop telling the machine to allow me to use the ink. So it stops printing right away, even though wow. the that's really? correct. Wow. Oh, shit. Uh, it doesn't this sound to you like there's something illegal about this? That there's just something very wrong? I mean, to begin with, to tell me, hey, you want an extended warranty? You just join an HP Plus. Well, that's fine. I'll join AP HP Plus. That's fine. I'm not a, that sounds good to me. But then I found out that's exactly the thing that triggers the machine to know you just bought a machine and won't allow you to use any other ink cartridges but, but HP, which are at least 25% higher in price than oh, the- Oh, uh, double. Sometimes double, yeah. I have, a, I have an, an inkjet that's six years old that's still running, but not very well. Yeah. And, and I, I, can get the, I, I can get the HP cartridges, the extended, the, the high use ones, 
for about $110, but I can get them online on Amazon for 25. Well, those are the high those are the high yield. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, under under some generic name on Amazon and they work great. Well, HP doesn't want to doesn't want to sell. That's good to know cuz I'm in the market for a new printer and so I'll stay away from that. HP doesn't seem to be selling high yield, you know. But anyway, no. it, 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 the point is there's something really wrong about this, you know, and I've always been a uh, a person who used, um, uh, you know, used this for a long time. You know, I was always a big user of, uh, of HP. Uh, I think my last was an Epson, but I like HP, and I've been using HP over and over and over again. And uh, I, this, I called them today to just argue with them about this. So first, this is one woman, and she says, well, I'll turn you over to the inkjet people. And then she sends me over to the inkjet people who say, oh, you have to talk to customer support. And she sends me over to customer support, and then I'm online, but it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It was just a horrible experience. And nobody seemed to know what they were talking about or seemed to know what I was trying to tell them, <laughs> that, hey, you know, you snockered me into signing up for this HP Plus by giving me the extended warranty, but I didn't necessarily want to take your uh, your six months of uh, of your stupid HP instant ink, right? And and what happens is if you have the instant ink and you stop paying for it, <laughs> you're sitting there with a brick. Yeah, that's good to know because I'm in the market for an HP printer. Yeah, did you know this when you uh, first did it, uh, Brian? Or, or you didn't no, do? I Whenever they want extra money, I say no. Well, this wasn't extra money. The well, HP well, Plus was you had to just sign up for the HP Plus in order well, to get the extended warranty. They would automatically give you the extended warranty. Sound like doesn't that sound like logically like a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what gets me really upset last week. What? ADT. So I got we you know we just we just redid our house mm -hmm. and so. We got, uh, so yeah, I said, you know what? Finally, I'm going to do it. Go to ring. So we got the ring doorbell. Mm -hmm. And so I canceled my ADT mm -hmm. and the security system. And then, you know, I say I want to quit. And they say, oh, well, why? I said, well, just because, you know, I just said, you know, hard times right now and, you know, can't afford it. Blah, blah. Oh, well, let me see what I can do. Oh. Then she starts like hacking the price for six months. Well, can you do it for half of this? And I said, no, no, no. I really, you know, just, you know, struggling with this and just can't do it. And she said, hold on. And they just keep slashing the price for six months. And I'm like, where the hell were you since I've been a loyal customer for all this time? And now all of a sudden, you, you don't want me to pay for six months and then and then give it to me. And then, you know, when I'm trying to cancel. So I think I'm going to start canceling everything. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking of canceling. Uh, I did a little uh, little price comparison between my FiOS c coverage that I have for cable and then all the other things that I buy at the same time, like Netflix and so on and so forth. Added all those up, and it came out to like $325 a month. Mm. All right? And then mm. I went and figured if I pull the... Uh, the cable, but I keep the internet, right? It'll go up about $50, but okay. So I started adding all that up, and with all the stuff I already have, guess what? Mm -hmm. If I get, like for instance, if I go and I get, um, what was it? Uh, if I get Hulu uh, Live TV, I get all the channels that I want, plus I get the, the whole Disney package in that for like 75 bucks a month. And then I added all the others up and it came out to like $250 as opposed to, as opposed to the 325. So I'm thinking of going to Fios and saying, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of cutting the cable. What kind of deal are you gonna give me and give me the same stuff I got right now? You don't even have to ask for a deal. Just say you, you, you need to stop, you know, you need, you know, hard times right now. You need to cancel. Well, I'm, That's all you I'm, need I'm to have to say I'm thinking about canceling because I don't want to cancel right then because I have to have all my other ducks in a row before I yeah. do it. Yeah. You know. So anyway, you know, I'm I'm just thinking. And then the other thing I'm thinking of doing is I have a uh, uh, a router for the you know for the uh, Wi-Fi and so on and so forth. 
and um, uh, that I'm paying $15 a month for. So I'm thinking of buy, buying the really new one, the really good new one. Uh, that's three, and I'm buying it for and buy it for three hundred bucks and not get fifteen dollars a month taken out, you know. So I mean, it just it. I just I I think that probably if I just go to them and say I'm really thinking about cutting all my services, uh, okay. wh what kind of deal are you going to give me to keep me here? And if they say nothing, then I'll say okay, I'll be calling you soon to, you know, cancel all this. But my problem is, and probably like Charlie too, maybe Tony, but like sports, sports, because I, I like the Eagles, Philadelphia, so I, I, I have the ticket for that, and then I keep the cable to watch the you know Giants games and the Warriors games, and then it's always something. So, Brian, do you have Direct TV? Because you don't need Direct TV. You don't need to. I cancel Direct TV. All you have to do is get the app for the NFL Sunday ticket and pay it once. Uh -huh. Really? I had the app. It, it's not as good as DirecTV, but it worked fine. Huh. Well, we the, cut the cord. I still have DirecTV, but I just canceled it. And I downloaded the app to my uh, to, my brother did it to Apple TV because it's just the app. Mm -hmm. And we paid once, and that was it. How and much does it cost, app. though, for the NFL package? Uh, I, the app was free, but the Sunday ticket, I think it cost them like 250 or yeah. 275 something like that. Well, how much does it cost to have uh, Direct TV? Have it on well, Direct TV. Had Direct TV, Alex. Basic would have cost me sixty dollars a month, and then you still had to pay for the ticket. And after the football's over, I wasn't even watching. Well, how much TV was the ticket on Direct TV? The it still was the same price, Alex. Oh, then Both? then you should do the yeah. Uh, yeah. Why why you know? So I, I was like, you know, we get the app, and I I called them and said, yeah, we could get it, and then I just cut them off. I canceled Direct TV. Mm -hmm. And I told DirecTV why, said, because I don't even watch DirecTV because I'm only getting it for the Sunday ticket. Okay, yeah. yeah, so you could actually cancel your DirecTV bill, Brian, and get the app. Well, you know, with Hulu, I can get this live TV and I can get all the, all the like all my local channels. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get those. And I get uh, all these other major channels. And Marjorie really just wants MSNBC and I think one or two other things. And they're all there. And then on top of it, uh, for 75 bucks, I also get my Disney bundle, which I already had yeah, thrown amazing. in at that at that price. And then I start putting in all these other things like Netflix and blah, 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 and this thing and that thing. And while before I'm through, I'm still paying less than I was paying, you know. Yeah. Alex, you know what I was going to ask you? I'm getting bored of Netflix. I just watch. I like, I was watching Moon Knight before and mm -hmm. then. I went to Netflix. There's nothing really ever really on I can find. Listen, I, 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 you know, I think Netflix sucks. All right. They gotta get bored of it. And oh, the no, only please. reason, no, the no, only please. reason I have it is because Marjorie wants it. I know, uh, she loves. That. She loves to binge watch Turkish show, soap operas. I don't know. Watching you know. Get, get Prime, Amazon Prime. It's included with your shipping and all that. And a lot of the movies that are on Netflix are on Prime for free. No, that's not true. No, no, no. no There's a lot of stuff. No, you're, that's not true. That's no. not true. No. Uh, but, uh, oh, I know. Uh, no, I'm telling you, it's not true. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, net, but what I hate about Netflix, here's what I hate about Netflix. Uh, for instance, Peaky Blinders is coming back on. Oh, okay. I've already mm -hmm. seen this season's Peaky Blinders because I know where to go on the internet to get it, to download it and watch it, Okay. And that show is produced by Channel 4 in England. All right? Okay. That being the case. It now comes to America. It's a Netflix original. Uh. <laughs> what? It, it'll say Netflix original, right, at the beginning of the show. And it'll say, it'll have a little logo at the beginning, and they'll have the writing at the beginning says Netflix original. And you go... You know, are you really trying to snocker me this way? I mean, and everything's like a Netflix original, and and a lot of these shows aren't. You know, the show with uh, with what's his name, the uh, the prime the president of the U of Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a Netflix original. No, it was a Ukrainian original. I'm sorry. You know, that's like uh, Shecky told me the that show. <clears throat> was in England. What was it again, Alex, the show with from Showtime? What's that name? Shameless. I always thought it was an American. He said, no, that's, that was overseas, he said. Oh, that he was a British to... show. Yeah, the, yeah, that's what he said. The, I never knew it. Well, the watching. original, the one you saw here in America. Was the fake. 
was was right. was an American version of that show yeah. that yeah. some people really loved. But quite frankly, if you ever saw the original, you'd think this one sucked. That's what he said. He says that's I says that that's a decent show. So that, he says that's over there already. I've watched it. It's over really. He goes, yeah. yeah. It seems like they take a lot from British Alex than the TV show. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, there's a really good show, a two-part documentary, Netflix original, on uh, sure. Netflix. Oh, I love that. Uh, the, each episode's an hour and a half long, and it. it do you, anybody here know who Jimmy Seville was? No. Nope. Jimmy, we see it. It's amazing. If I had a British person sitting here who just lived in England yeah, for right. years, oh, Jimmy Seville, I know who that was. Jimmy Seville was one of the biggest television personalities in England just for years for 40 years wow. and uh, he helped hospitals and he raised money for hospitals and uh, he uh, ran a show which kids loved and he had kids on him and made their wishes come true it's called was called Jim will fix it and he was just one of the most beloved human beings uh, Princess Di used to love hanging out with him oh, and going to hospitals with him. And uh, Prince uh, uh, Philip loved hanging out with him. And uh, one person or another, I mean, he was just, he, he, he was royalty almost in and of himself, okay? Turns out he molested over 400 oh, kids. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this whole documentary is about. He's about a busy the, guy. The history of this guy, and over a period of something like forty years, four hundred had come forward and said they they were molested by Jimmy hey. Seville. Did now Jimmy how, Seville, how old is he now? Oh, he's dead. Oh. He, he died. He died just before the scandal really broke. You know, and I guess it kind of broke after he died because people weren't afraid of him anymore. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, do you ever remember there was this guy, he was a rock artist, his name was Gary Glitter? You told me that that's the song they used to play at the wrestling matches. So well, I don't know, but Gary Glitter uh, eventually, in I think in Asia, got arrested for hitting on young kids and is now in jail for the rest of his life. Well, he wow. and Gary Glitter used to actually have sex with people, with young, underage mm -hmm. girls, in his dressing room at the BBC. Oh, nobody knew about this? Watch this documentary. It is just, watch. it's called Jim, Jimmy Seville, A British Horror Story. I gotta watch. Is that Netflix? Yeah, yeah. It's really oh. good. It's really good. I've been looking forward to it for quite a while because I was, I, I know the story and I, I just went, and Marjorie watched it with me. It's three hours long total. Oh, like and she, topic. after it was all over, she said, wow. You know. well, I gotta, I'll check that out tomorrow night. Huh? I'll check it out yeah. then. I'll put it on my watch list. And the other thing we, I watched, anybody watch the Benjamin Franklin thing on PBS? I didn't see it. Is it any good? It's really good. Um, mm. I didn't realize, you know, I'll tell you, I've lived all my life. Everybody knows Benjamin Franklin. Hell, he's on the $100 bill. Yeah. And you go, wow. I, you watch this thing and all of a sudden you go, why is George Washington the father of our country? If anybody was the father of our country, it was this guy. I mean, he did all the negotiating with the French to get them French. to enter into the into the Revolutionary War to supply us with money and and all kinds of things. And he was just he was more influential in the founding of this country than any of those other, you know, white guys. Trump wanted to change the picture to him. And do you know what his last his last act was? You'll love this one, Charlie. Do you know what his last act was? He tried to get put into the Constitution a uh, amendment uh, or a statement freeing the slaves. Oh wow! Oh wow! No. And this was you know how many years? Uh, is sixty yeah. years, seventy years before Lincoln did it? Um, yeah. By doing this, he started the conversation back in like 1883 or something like that. But he wrote a whole thing that he wanted included in the Constitution to eventually abolish slavery, hmm. in spite of the fact that he was a slave owner in his earlier years, but had come to the point where he felt it was terrible, a terrible change. 
Yeah. They do change, you know. I mean, yeah. I think he was I think he was into slavery because back then it was part of your economy. If you were a landowner and you need to take care of your land, what better uh, to have yeah. than slaves to work the land for you? Absolutely. Uh, but uh, but he I don't know if he was really much of a landowner to be honest with you, you know. But they brought so up. So this show is about his life. Is a, what you're it's saying about his whole life, and 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 about him going to Europe. You know, he spent total maybe twenty years in England in and France. You know, uh, and and in many ways he didn't want to come back from England. He liked England too much. You know, but it's it's a great story. About, and then about him as an inventor. I mean, this yeah. guy pretty much invented electricity. That whole thing, life. I always thought it's a cute story with the kite and the key on the kite. <laughs> but that, that, that little experiment that. proved that electri where electricity came from and what, what it was. And uh, he was, uh, you know, he was an inventor. I mean, he was he, maybe one of the most amazing people to ever inhabit this country. Absolutely. The only person who might be smarter than him might be Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that with a straight face, just if you get mad. Yeah. Uh, I bet Phil would agree with you. <laughs> Nikola Tesla was pretty smart. Like, yeah, you know what the hell's going I was on. Tesla, yeah. The Tesla Nikola, was Nikola, yeah, Nikola, Nikola Tesla. Well, you got to realize uh, that 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 he uh, developed alternating current. Yeah, but yep. ben, uh, but Ben Benjamin Franklin uh, was working in a vacuum. I mean, when he came yeah. up with his theories about electricity, it was before anybody conceived of what electricity was. Right. You know? So, I mean, for him to come up with and to start, you know, whatever Tesla did, he benefited from what Benjamin right. Franklin You're right. did. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Uh, and yes, Tesla was very bright and yes. qu quite terrific. And uh, died broke. Died and broke. died broke, yeah. 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 Uh, but, uh, you know, te Tesla uh, came up with alternating current and tried to sell it to, you know, convince Edison, who he was working for, this was the better idea than, than uh, direct current. George Westinghouse. Huh? Yeah. George Westinghouse. No, I'm talking about Edison. Current. He worked for Edison. Yeah, Tesla Tesla worked, worked for Edison, and while he now, was at okay. Ed Edison, he tried to sell him on the idea of alternating current and Edison wouldn't go for it. Wouldn't buy it, wouldn't so, buy it. So he you know left there. what Edison there. did to prove that alternating current was more dangerous? Yes, yep. he cre well, created the electric chair. Uh, he mm -hmm. electrocuted a, an elephant. No, no, but also he created the electric created chair, electric chair too, right. yeah. to make alternating current look deadly. The interesting thing is the electric chair around this country is direct current. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, he... Uh, he, you know, but he, yes, he did. He, uh, there are the, the films of the uh, elephant being electrocuted. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but Tesla, uh, you know, came up with the idea of alternating current, which would allow electricity to travel further. Yep. Oh, yeah. With, with direct current, you had to, about every yep, mile had to have it. another power station, you know, where with yep. alternating current, you could go, you know, 50 miles on one wire. And it's like modern cars have alternators, not generators. So they generate alternating current, and then there's diodes built into it mm -hmm. that convert it to direct current. Mm -hmm. So anyway, is alternating current so much more efficient? Yeah, but he got Westinghouse to to invest in it and to go with it, and then that's how that's how he got his association with Westinghouse. Yeah, but there are a lot of people, you know, a lot of people who who who. I mean, I don't think Tesla ever really saw the, the, the financial rewards for his inventions. No, he sold his stock to Westinghouse. Yeah, yeah. Westinghouse. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, there are other people who got screwed like by that. Who was it? Philo T. Farnsworth. Anybody know the name? Philo T. Farnsworth? Oh. He's, uh, he's a guy who invented a little thing called television. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Before before Sarnoff ever supposedly came up with it, you know, and um, Michael Faraday is another one. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, so Michael Faraday says that if you 
his biggest thing was if you apply a voltage to a cage and there's a man inside, he won't die. So he he, he had these huge uh, um, uh, lightning generators in a room and he sat in a cage on a chair as long as he didn't come in contact. His theory is used by birds every day. They land on these 500,000 volt lines and lines. yeah, you know, and it doesn't affect them because they're not going to ground. And so a microwave oven, he he came, the, the cage he was in is named the Faraday cage. Mm -hmm. And a microwave oven is basically a Faraday cage. You've got the little holes in the front that you can see through. It blocks the microwaves, but you can still see into it. And right now, people who work for uh, for Uber or uh, Lyft uh, probably have several fares a day. <laughs> Faraday, yes. I That's thought I would uh, just uh, try that joke out on you. If it works, I'll use Faraday. it on other, uh, other people. <laughs> it worked. It worked. It's okay. Yeah. But, uh, oh, I got one other story here for you. you can, let me go, go over here. I don't know. I have no place to put stuff like this. But this is what we see. Nothing. Your arm moving. No hands. Yeah. Ah, there we go. There we go. See her? See her? Yeah. Wait She's a minute. She's missing. See her? She got fired. She got fired. Uh, the morning co-host, her name is uh, Amber Athey, I guess, was fired after an anti-VP tweet drew protest. Okay. Now, what do you think this woman said about our vice president that got her fired? You would think it was something horrible about Kamala Harris, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Kamala Harris, but uh, uh, here's here's what here's what she said. Hold on a second, let me get my glasses here. Uh, I only need them for reading. Uh, uh, anyway, she uh, she's come to an end. Athie Washington, editor at a conservative magazine, The Spectator, alleges that she was fired for making a Twitter joke about Kamala Harris's attire at the State of the Union address that likened Harris's brown suit to a UPS uniform. <laughs> That's oh got her fired. That I got her fired. That. that got her fired. Now, I mean, she's a conservative, but <laughs> it says here, Athy, who co-hosted uh, with Larry O'Connor since January, wrote uh, at the Spectator that she had tweeted, "Camel Harris looks like a UPS employee. What can Brown do for you?" Uh, nothing good, apparently. That's kind of racist. That that yeah, that, that, that part funny. could be bad. Yeah, that kind of racist. I'll tell yeah. you though. It, 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 okay, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Why you, you got to go to Charlie? That's racist too. Jeez. Well, yeah. well, unfortunately, it's not like we. This is not like the Al Sharpton show where I have a whole panel of nothing but black people here. You know. <laughs> yeah, but I have. Why? To, I have to go for him. Right I have to rely on him for the black somebody perspective. Somebody else, then you go to him. So it's not that you know. Do you, Do you see that as as particularly racist? What she well, said. The way you, when you read the way you read the tweet, it kind of was racist. I mean. You could, it's a some. It was about her being brown. It's kind, That's right. kind of a funny joke, isn't it? Um, yeah, but, you know, it depends I don't because I, if you know, you don't know how people think in their brain, you know. Oh, and so I, somebody could say the first thing, and then every time you talk yeah. about UPS, you always say, you know, what can Brown do for you? Yeah. You know. So maybe they just clicked on that part, but yeah. maybe they did that part, you but, know, but, because of the front. Part, let me know? ask you this. She wrote this as a tweet, right? She didn't say this on the air. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So should she be fired for something she writes in a tweet but doesn't say on the air? Yeah, but how many people did it go to? It doesn't, yeah, we tried, it doesn't to, we tried to fire Trump twice for his tweets. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I think the question here has always been to me, should people be held accountable for their tweets by their employer who happens to be a radio or television station when that particular thing that they said never wound up on the radio or television station. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If you were on the radio now in San Francisco, I'm just wondering what you just said. I'm wondering, do you think they would sit there now, listen to everything you said, or whatever you tweeted? Can you see if you went for a job and they start tweet, like doing a name search like oh look at what he put up here are they doing this now like no oh, yeah for people oh, personalities yeah. They, they do that. but uh, charlie charlie if i said that same joke you'd laugh at it wouldn't you 
You wouldn't think uh, of it as racist because you know I'm not racist. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. You know that my intention was just to make people laugh. And it would be obvious she's brown. What can yeah, brown do for you? He'd be telling the truth. You know, I just don't see it as a horrible joke. But I also think the employer should talk to the person. I don't think that should warrant uh, firing. They but, you should, know, it, it should be it, a, a, you know, please make sure we're being sensitive and blah, hey, look, blah. It, What I would say to her if I were the employer was, look, this could be taken any number of ways. And I know it's on your private time when you're doing your tweets. You know, it's on your private life. Uh, and I'm not here to tell you what to do. But this makes us look bad. Even though, you know, and so please try to refer, be careful about what you tweet. Yeah, exactly. You know, but I don't think firing her was the uh, was the solution to the problem. You know, it stopped the tweets, didn't it? No, what it is, is it's it's the employer being afraid of how they're going to be perceived yeah. 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 and saving their own ass. They're not thinking they're not thinking about, hey, you know, this is offensive to black people. They don't give a shit, to be honest yeah. with you. What they give a shit about is that you, OK, uh, don't think they're terrible because one of your employees did something. You know, it sucks trying to be funny because. <clears throat> My friends, I told you guys before, my friends all different colors and in a wheelchair and everything. And all we did, short, tall, we all just rip on each other all the time when we see each other. You know, so we still do that. I you know. know. <laughs> but it's like, I, I man, I, I, I don't know how, how, I mean, I know we talk about it so many times, but man, how do comedians do it nowadays? You can't be off the cuff in a certain situation. Yeah, you can get slapped. Well, when I did my show on Sirius XM and I had uh, Patrick used to call the show. And I used to call him uh, a, a gimpoid American, you know. I mean, and he he loved it. It was he had fun with it, you know. He and I think you know what it is. I think it's the fact that she's a conservative. Uh, and if if I did it, everybody would go, oh well, Alex doesn't have anything against black people, and he's just making a joke about her dress looking like UPS. What can Brown do for you? Oh, she happens to be brown. Ha ha ha. All right. Because you know that you know where the joke's coming from, but if it's coming from somebody who's considered to be a conservative, then all of a sudden it's offensive. Like Chris Rock trying to be funny. That's right. You know? He got slapped. I mean, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of people, you know, trying to be funny, and it's just, man, it just sucks. Lately. And there are probably some people with alopecia who were offended by that. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Well, now, what do we have here? What do we have? Show us some of her latest works of art here before we yeah, go. Yeah, come on. Yes, sharing every week, so she did. Uh... Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, did she it's draw? A, that, that a, it's a picture uh, of Alex. The, the, the letter is J, Jaguar, so she did Jaguar. Oh, okay. But uh, did she draw that, or was that a, like already drawn, and then she just colored it in? Oh, no, no. She drew it. She drew it? Yeah. Boy. Adrian, you know you're very talented. Yeah, wow. We get to see your stuff on, on, on Daddy's Facebook. <laughs> Did you spell Jaguar right? Yeah. Okay, double check. How do you spell Jaguar, Adrian? How do you spell Jaguar, Adrian? She's too shy. Right. Okay. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. There's some really good, oh my God, it's over time. Yeah, they, on YouTube, they show you do a circle, do this on the side, do this on the side. So it's really fun to do. I do it with it. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Oh, Adrian, you say good night. Good night. Good night, Adrian. Oh, oh, that's so, oh. We're over. <laughs> Go ahead. Good night. Yeah, good Thank night. Jeff. Thanks for coming. Anyway. Tony, <laughs> great seeing you tonight. Yeah. Alan, <laughs> awesome night tonight. Charlie, yeah. glad there's no baseball. And Alex Bennett, always, every night, great to see you. Okay, everybody. everybody give me a big one, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. <laughs> There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there'll be a new one assembling next here on the uh, on GabNet with uh, uh, our good friend um, Jack Bishop on the intersection. You call him at GabNet Live on Skype. I'll see you again tomorrow night right here back at the old ranch uh, as we uh, attempt to wrangle another audience together. 
Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, get vaccinated, okay? And if you have been vaccinated, get a booster. And if you've been boosted, hey, you know, there's another one out there. Anyway, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.